What the fuck does it even mean to say that you're spiritual? Seriously, what the fuck does that mean? I've been trying to get a straight answer to that question for more than a decade now, and the closest I've ever gotten is confident gobbledygook from people too dumb to know they didn't just say anything. When she was kind of browbeat into delineating the difference between religion and spirituality on Oprah's show back in 2013, long-distance swimmer Diana Nyad rambled, quote, I think you can be an atheist who doesn't believe in an overarching being who created all of this and sees over it, but there's spirituality because we human beings and we animals and maybe even we plants, but certainly the ocean and the moon and the stars, we all live with something that is cherished and we feel the treasure of it. And tortured, nonsensical quote. And look, I, I don't point this out to pick on Naya. This came after Oprah said she could be an atheist because she was good or some bullshit like this. She, she was scrambling to find middle ground with a bigot on live TV. I, I don't know that I could have done any better even if I'd had a dictionary. Hell, dictionaries are no help here. Right, because they just tell you that spirituality is of or relating to the spirit. And under spirit, they'll tell you that that means the little ghost that drives the person. But that's not what a person means when they say I'm spiritual. They don't mean I believe in ghosts. It's not what Diana Nyad was talking about. I mean, most of those people probably do believe in ghosts. But when people say I'm spiritual but not religious, they certainly aren't trying to convey to you that they believe in secular souls. But the, the closest thing I can find to an academic definition comes from the Royal College of Psychiatrists. Here it is, quote. Spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling or sense or belief that there is something greater than myself, something more to being human than sensory experience, and that the greater whole of which we are part is cosmic or divine in nature, end quote. And while I'm sure that most of the people who identify with the term would agree that pretty much sums it up, it's also meaningless, completely meaningless meaningless. Like, let, let, let's break it down. There are three distinct claims that are being made here. The first is that something is greater than myself. Greater how? In achievement? Sure. In number? Definitely. In volume? Absolutely. Right. Regardless, that's a universal belief that all people share. Right. I, I've met plenty of people who behave as though they think they're the greatest thing that ever has been or could be, but I doubt any of them would tell you that outright. It, it, it's certainly not like a default religious belief one needs a term to differentiate from. Now, the second claim is that there's uh, more to being a human than sensory experience, which is likewise a universal belief. Having an idea isn't a sensory experience. Neither is wanting a coffee. A, a great deal of our lived experience exists outside of our sensory input. Now, it might derive from our sensory input, but it might not. Regardless, that'd be a different claim. It is not, not like in a technicality sort of way. It's the kind of claim that this definition is deliberately stopping short of, or it would create more questions than it would answer. Now, the third claim, of course, is that the greater whole that we're part of is cosmic or divine in nature. And this sentence might as well be a snake eating its own fucking tail. I mean, cosmic in nature, as in relating to the cosmos? Because that's just what the word cosmic means. It means pertaining to the universe as a whole. So to say that the greater thing we're part of is the universe is to make yet another non-statement that would, at least in this instance, be literally impossible to disagree with. Now, there is an or hanging out there, perhaps trying to distract us from the fact that the inclusion of cosmic makes the whole goddamn thing tautologically. And, and the other option is divine. So Assuming we veer right at the or, we came all this way to say that to be spiritual is to believe in the divine. In other words, to be religious. So if we take this definition at face value, the spiritual but not religious people are either trying to tell us that they're not religious but religious, or they're trying to tell us that they're not religious but they are contained within the larger universe. I don't think either of those things really captures what the fuck they mean. But of course, what they actually mean is nothing at all. It's a meaningless term that is kept intentionally vague. No effort to pin it down could possibly be effective because the whole point of it is to be undefinable. The information that's being communicated when one says I'm spiritual but not religious is I don't belong to any religion. But I stop short of admitting that the world is confined to reality. Right? E or... They're doing the thing that fucking Diana Nyad was doing where they're trying to say, I'm an atheist, but I'm not like those atheists, right? They're trying to cater to the bigotry of religious people by offering a deceptively meaningless olive branch. And look, 
depending on the circumstances, I don't necessarily fault anybody for that. Sometimes you're waving that olive branch defensively, right? Using it to beat back bigotry. For some bigots, you actually have to say, I'm an atheist, but that doesn't mean I hate beautiful sunsets and think rainbows are stupid. You have to tell them that just because you don't belong to a specific religion doesn't mean that you're incapable of love. On the other hand, by catering to those bigots, we're also empowering them. We're leaning into the stereotype that says that one is required to externalize their awe in some way to fully experience humanhood. That's dangerous as hell, especially for those of us reluctant to adopt a meaningless identifier just to claim our space amongst those capable of experiencing wonder.